The movie starts in a church where a woman is reading a book to some children. A little girl notices wind gushing towards the woman and forming her doppelganger. Her eyes roll back as the original notices her and screams in fear. Shinobu Takamura is a struggling painter who is working hard for an upcoming multinational painting competition. One afternoon, after failing to come up with a decent painting idea, Shinobu has an emotional meltdown. Just then, a man knocks on her door and introduces himself as Masaru, her new upstairs neighbor. Masaru's kindness and his personality are a fresh breath of air for Shinobu, who is used to being locked inside her apartment every day. In a short time, they fall for each other and start living together at Masaru's place. One evening, Masaru claims that he saw her in the market earlier. She thinks it is strange because she was home the entire day, but they dismiss the conversation shortly. The following day, Shinobu goes to a convenience store to buy groceries, but the cashier accuses her of using fake cash. He even shows the CCTV footage of her buying groceries yesterday, using the bill with the same serial number on it. Shinobu is in shock because she knows she hasn't come to the store in the past month and is definitely carrying real cash. However, her word is not enough to convince the cashier. Soon, a cop named Kano arrives and brings Shinobu outside. She still tries to explain her case, but before before she finishes, the cop says that he believes her. He shows her both bills and one of them turns into dust out of nowhere. Shinobu is left speechless and confused. Kano reveals that the situation is a lot more complicated than she thinks it is and he needs some time to explain it to her. Later, he brings her to a house where a group has gathered to discuss the same problem. It turns out that the person Shinobu saw on the CCTV footage is her doppelganger also known as her bilocation. A bilocation is created when a person feels an extreme emotion that overwhelms them. It is an exact copy of the original person, one that has the same memories, emotions, and personality. The leader of the group is a man named Makoto. He reveals that bilocations think that they are real, but are actually created from a person's energy and will disappear when the person dies. The information is too overwhelming for Shinobu, so she refuses to believe it. But on her way out, she comes face to face with her bilocation. She disappears in a few seconds, but the brief interaction is enough for Shinobu to believe everything she was just told. After that, a girl from the group named Mayumi offers to drop Shinobu off at home. On their way, she reveals that she has a chronically ill son who has been in the hospital for his entire life. A few months ago, she was told by hospital staff that they saw her in parts of the hospital where she wasn't allowed. This went on for a few days before one afternoon, her son disappeared and was found in the park. The records said that she was the one who took him outside, which is when she found out about the bilocation. Mayumi also warns Shinobu that the bilocation might try to steal something that is precious to her. When they stop at a red light, Mayumi's bilocation appears out of nowhere and starts banging on the window. Shinobu is shocked because the woman looks identical to Mayumi and she isn't sure which one is real. Mayumi quickly drives away, asking her to be careful at all times. The next day, Officer Kano gives Shinobu a mirror, urging her to check it time and again when she meets new people. This is the only way to identify a doppelganger because their reflection is not visible in the mirror. Kano also tells her about how he got to know about his bilocation. A month ago, he was about to be promoted at work, but was facing problems because of his boss. When he and his boss already had differences, he was accused of misbehaving at work. He knows he never talked back to anyone and soon found out it was his bilocation who abused the boss. He was demoted because of the incident and wants to kill his bilocation to take revenge. After the meeting, Shinobu is walking home and Kano approaches her again. When she checks the mirror, she doesn't see his reflection and the realization washes over her face. She tries to run, but he pulls her back and proceeds to punch her. The real Kano arrives shortly thereafter and stops him, but before he can kill the bilocation, it disappears. In the next meeting, Shinobu is concerned about the attack made on her yesterday. This time, a man named Kaga is also present in the meeting. He is the first member of the group and the one who is conducting an extensive study on bilocations. Shinobu finds him mysterious but doesn't voice her thoughts. She is told that before talking to any member of the group over the phone, she must say a code word that consists of all of their names. 
That's one long-ass code word. That way, they can ensure she is not a doppelganger. Then, Makoto further explains that Kano's bilocation was created because of his anger towards his boss, which is why he is so aggressive. Similarly, all bilocations have their own defining personalities, so they don't have to worry too much about being attacked again. Furthermore, the bilocations can only exist within a 1.5 kilometer radius of the original, and will disappear if they try to walk further from that distance. They also get hurt when the original original gets hurt, which is a good way of separating them if they are ever in a fight. At night, Shinobu hears the news about three people being killed outside the police station, and the culprit is none other than Kano. Shinobu immediately figures out that it must be his bilocation who killed the people. She calls Makoto, who asks her for the code, before inviting her to their headquarters. Poor Kano is on the floor, clueless about what he can do to save his reputation. The group decides to kill the bilocation at all costs, now that it is creating so much trouble. In the following scene, they go to an abandoned building to wait for the bilocation to materialize near the real Kano. The plan works, and the doppelganger arrives at midnight. The real and fake Kano get into a fight, making it hard to differentiate between them. They should have made Kano wear a silly hat. One of the members of the group is a university student named Takumi. He manages to get his hands on a gun, but doesn't know whom to shoot. On Makoto's order, he shoots randomly and kills the real Kano. With him, the doppelganger also dies, and the plan fails. Shinobu returns home and packs her bags to stay away from her boyfriend for a few days, so the bilocation would also be away from him. Before leaving, she tells him that she loves him. Somewhere else, Mayumi goes to her son and gives him a hand mirror. She asks him to always check if he can see her reflection in the mirror, and if he doesn't, he is supposed to run away. The kid agrees and hugs his mother. Poor little bastard must be terrified. The next day, Takumi is in one of his classes when his bilocation attacks him. He runs to another room and calls Makoto to save his life. When asked about the code, Takumi forgets to say Kaga's name, even though he is the oldest and the most prominent member of the group. Still, Makoto doesn't doubt him and agrees to help. Suddenly, the bilocation barges in through the window and attacks him again. Amidst the fight, the original pushes the fake out the window. When he still hangs by the wall, the original cuts his hand, which which makes a cut in the bilocation's hand as well, causing him to fall and disappear. Then, we see Mayumi with her son in his hospital room. She tries to walk him outside, but he refuses to come with her, claiming that she is not his mother. Mayumi is in shock, but the kid remains adamant because he used the mirror technique, as his mother had asked him to. A flashback shows us that one night, Mayumi was tired of always having to take care of her son. She tried to choke him to death, but regretted the decision right away. This feeling of regret and the will to protect her son created her bilocation. Hence, the bilocation frequently takes the kid away because she doesn't want the original to hurt him. Later that day, Shinobu, Mayumi, and the university student Takumi meet without Makoto. They think that the leader is trying to scam them since he did nothing to help Takumi earlier when he was attacked. They also believe the first member, Kaga, is on Makoto's side, planning something against them. Just as they talk, the doppelganger Takumi attacks the real one. Mayumi hits him from behind and makes a cut on his back. To their utter surprise, the injury also transfers to the Takumi who they thought was their friend. This means that the person they were talking to earlier is the bilocation, and the attacker is the original. Unable to comprehend what is going on, the women run away. Mayumi is soon attacked by another Mayumi, who stabs her to death. Again, the injury doesn't transfer to the killer, which means the person who Shinobu thought was her friend is also a bilocation. God damn. She runs away to her home and has a hard time processing what is real and what isn't. At one point, she questions her own existence. The only person who has the answers is Makoto. She goes to the headquarters and finds him and Kaga together. Makoto says that he wants to protect her and the others, but Shinobu doesn't believe him after everything that has happened. To answer all her questions, Kaga takes Shinobu to a mental hospital the next day. It is the place where Makoto met his wife Sisha for the first time. They were married for 10 years. Before Makoto found out, she was actually a bilocation. The day he found out was the day the real Sisha committed the unthinkable. She had been locked in an asylum for the past 25 years. Before Makoto could comprehend his wife's existence, she disappeared in front of his eyes. 
He always believed that bilocations deserve a life like the originals, which is why he created a club for them. The people Shinobu was meeting in the club were all bilocations who didn't realize their true identity. Makoto is sad he couldn't protect them, but he has vowed to take care of Shinobu. That day, Shinobu returns home and goes to her apartment, where she sees her bilocation. Still shocked by her existence, she runs back to Makoto again. Makoto reveals that he has met all the bilocations and their counterparts. The headquarters consists of two rooms. The first one with green curtains, which is a place for bilocation meetings, and the other one with red curtains, which is a place for their originals. Kago only stays in the green room because he has no bilocation. That way, Makoto can tell who is original and who is a bilocation by seeing if they take Kaga's name in the code. He does so to differentiate between the two and save them from each other. His intentions have never been bad, but they have caused many deaths. A flashback shows us the day Shinobu first met her boyfriend. She was going through a crisis after struggling to generate ideas for a painting. This overwhelmed her so much that the bilocation was formed. At the same time, her now boyfriend knocked on the door and the bilocation met him. This is when we find out that the person we've been following since the beginning of the movie is the bilocation of Shinobu. She has been living with her boyfriend in his apartment, while the original Shinobu lives in the upper apartment and hardly comes out because of work. Shinobu refuses to believe this because she can see her reflection in the mirror, but Makoto discloses that bilocations can see their own face in the mirror, but others can't. This has caused frequent confusion, like the real Kano meeting Shinobu in the restaurant when she was attacked. Shinobu finally realizes that she was able to see two reflections in the mirror when she first saw the real Shinobu. Her knees grow weak upon finding out the truth about her existence, but Makoto promises that he will help her live her life as she pleases. Shinobu returns home that day, and her boyfriend proposes to her with a ring. The proposal is bittersweet for her now that she knows how fragile her existence is. Later, the real Shinobu gets a call from the art gallery and discovers that her painting has won the competition. But when she sees the said painting, she realizes it was drawn by her bilocation. The original's only wish in life was to win this competition, and she is furious at the bilocation for taking it away from her. In a final showdown, they meet in the headquarters where the bilocation asks the original to take care of her boyfriend. She is ready to give up the prize, her career, and her boyfriend for his happiness. The original reluctantly agrees and walks away. After that, the bilocation goes to meet her boyfriend for the last time. He is excited about their wedding and wants her to look for a suitable wedding gown as soon as possible. As they chat, the original Shinobu commits the unthinkable. In the last scene, the man looks down the balcony and sees her dead body. When he turns around to look at his girlfriend, she has already disappeared. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.